Hey everyone, and welcome back to this class, Data Science, Deep Learning in Python, Part 1. Now that the hard part is done, we can go back to our expression for the gradient of the objective. We have these three derivatives, which we need to find. Luckily, we already know the derivative for the softmax, and the other two are pretty easy. Again, work these out on paper if you can't see right away how these are derived, or consult your calculus textbook if you forgot which rules to apply, although it should be pretty trivial. There are no steps between this slide and the previous slide. It's just a matter of applying the rules of calculus. The derivative of log of y is just 1 over y, and the derivative of w times x with respect to w is just x. The next step is to plug these in for our gradient expression and try to simplify. The first thing we can see quite easily is that y of n k prime appears both on the top and the bottom, so they cancel out. Unfortunately, we still have this pesky delta function, which ideally wouldn't show up. So the question is, can we get rid of it? Luckily, the answer is yes, but it requires a little bit of logic. First, remember that the delta function can only be 1 or 0. It's 1 if k prime is equal to k, and 0 if k prime is not equal to k. It helps to isolate the summation involving t and y, and to just forget about the sample index n for the time being. We can also separate the two terms in the summation into two separate summations. So let's look at the first term. Remember that delta is 1 only when k prime is equal to k. Therefore, for any other values of k prime, we get 0, and anything multiplied by 0 is still 0. Therefore, this is just equal to t of k. Next, let's look at the second term. Remember what I said earlier about dummy variables. Only dummy variables must exist inside the summation. Luckily, k prime is the dummy variable, and k is not. So in fact, y of k can be brought outside the summation. The next step is to realize that t represents a neural network target. Only one of the values is 1, and the rest are 0. Of course, in this scenario, it doesn't matter which one is 1, since we're just summing them together. And of course, 1 plus a bunch of zeros is still equal to 1. Therefore, this summation is just equal to y of k. Finally, we can plug this back into our gradient equation to get the following simple form. Now again, I want to remind you about this idea of dummy variables. As you can see, the variable n, which loops through the samples, is a dummy variable, and it exists only inside the summation. i and k, on the other hand, are not dummy variables, and they both exist inside and outside the summation. As mentioned earlier, they refer to the input node and the output node of our logistic regression model. The next step is to consider how this would be written in code. As a first try, you might do something like what you see here. First, we loop through all the input indices i equals 1 to d. Then we do a nested loop through all the output indices k equals 1 to big K. Then we do another nested loop through all the sample indices n equals 1 to big N. Of course, as we've learned before, this can be quite slow because Python for loops are slow. So the next question we want to consider is, how can we optimize this nested for loop so that we can avoid this slowness? Luckily, we learned this handy NumPy trick in my free NumPy prerequisites course. Whenever we see a sum over element-wise products, we remember that this is the same as doing a dot product or a matrix multiplication. If you recall, the numpy dot function does exactly what we want. Using the dot function, we can make our expression for the logistic regression gradient much simpler. It's just x transpose times t minus y. 
Now, technically speaking, this is not a dot product, but rather a matrix multiply. You can use the rules of matrix algebra to do a sanity check and make sure this works. First, we know that the shape of W is D by K, and therefore the gradient should also be D by K. We know that X is of shape N by D. And we know that both the target and the predictions are N by K. So ultimately, we have a D by N matrix multiplied by an N by K matrix. As you know from your linear algebra studies, the inner dimension disappears, so the resulting matrix is of size D by K as expected.